Holy shit. We messed up. We're sorry. Deeply apologize. Incredibly sorry. Well, that happened quickly. The watcher already apologized. That's the fastest I've ever seen a channel of that size own up to a bad decision. And I gotta say, they did a pretty good job handling it too. But although the apology seemed sincere, their fans are still left with a lot of valid questions and they pretty much went unanswered in the apology. Questions like, why did you even do this to begin with? Yesterday, I posted a video covering a YouTube group called The Watcher who basically attempted career self-delete by letting their loyal viewers, the backs this channel was actually built on, know that they're not going to be able to watch these YouTube videos for free on YouTube anymore. A few years back, Stephen Lynn, Ryan Bagara, and Jane Mage left their jobs at BuzzFeed to pursue their career on YouTube with the channel The Watcher. And the fans were absolutely loving that, man. They were eating that shit up. I personally didn't know about The Watcher until all this news broke out, but my preferences are more of a classic YouTube feel with someone sitting behind their desk bullshitting with you know pretty much raw content but the irony in all this is that the watcher back when they started their youtube channel had more of a raw feeling too and guess what everybody absolutely loved their content that was arguably what people were following them for is the behind the scenes real personal look into their lives and their art form like i can't find one single comment in their old videos that says oh your your, your quality is great i can't wait to watch you more because your quality is going to go up further no no one says stuff like that. I don't know, like all of their viewers legitly liked them for them, which quite literally put them and set them up in a spot in YouTube that is the best place to be on the platform. And at that point, you can just be in your raw uncut footage and people just eat that shit up because that's exactly what they want to see. It's arguably what draws people, more people into your videos is the relatability. It's clear here that there was a huge disconnect between what the watchers wanted from their viewers and what the viewers were willing to give to the watcher. I'll give them credit though, they did start their apology with the meat and potatoes. They, they, they started with that shit right off rip. They didn't say blah 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 blah. I'm sorry. They didn't say, I'm sorry, blah, 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 but no, they just say, I'm sorry. Hey everyone. Last Friday, we announced that we're leaving YouTube and launching our new streaming platform. We messed up. A lot of you spoke out with extremely valid comments and concerns, and we want to take the time now to address those. We've been reading the things you've been saying, and we're sorry for the way we handled this, as well as the way we communicated it. We understand where you're coming from, and we're making immediate changes. First, we want to affirm that you are the reason why we've been able to do anything at this company. You helped us every step of the way when we left BuzzFeed to start Watcher at the top of the pandemic in 2020. You've supported us in so many ways by watching our content, attending our live shows, buying our merch, becoming members of our Patreon, and giving words of encouragement over the years. Uh, and we are incredibly grateful for your support. We're sorry for how we originally delivered our goodbye message to YouTube. It was insensitive. We didn't properly express how much we appreciate all of you. And we did a really bad job of explaining the reasoning behind this transition. Okay, it looks like these guys' last conversation was with Death, and Death handed them a script and said, you must read this or you die. I mean, can you see the tears in this guy's eyes? He definitely wasn't expecting this. I mean, these guys must have planned for months to release this. They even made a whole streaming platform ahead of time. They thought this was going to be super successful, and then when they posted it, the internet did an entire 180 on them, and it turned out to be one of the worst PR disasters they could have even imagined. YouTube is no longer the place for that. The YouTube community is really holding people accountable recently, and for good reason too. I think we can all recognize a slippery slope when we can see one, and with all the copyright claims happening nowadays, the blatant doxing and favoritism that's been happening on YouTube for a while, basically the only way to mitigate this is when there's an insane huge amount of backlash by fairly important people on the platform. I care a lot about fair use and uh, free speech and uh, everything. So I offered to put him in, no, I put him in touch with my attorney. I mean, I'm convinced this didn't even go viral because it was the watcher. Any large YouTuber could have made this mistake and the community would have been at their heels, forcing them to rethink their entire life within 48 hours. I honestly do feel a little bit of remorse though, because these guys truly do sound like they're sorry. Damn, I just heard the Canadian in me. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to stay skeptical, and do you know why? I was also super sincerely sorry when I was a kid in the middle of my mom lecturing me. We can't just deny the possibility that they're saying whatever they can to save their face at the moment. I have to give them credit though, they did fix the exact thing people were complaining about immediately. That is something a lot of YouTubers don't follow through with is fixing their mistake, but I still have my original questions not been answered yet. Why? Why was there 
ever a consideration for an entirely new platform. This apology kind of makes it seem like we misunderstood their intentions, but we didn't. There is no way that they didn't know that charging their Patreon users an extra $6 to watch their videos wasn't double. I don't know if they saw like a UFC fight and thought, whoa, they're charging $70 for the fight and $30 on top for the membership. Why not us? They already have three tiers of payment on their Patreon, giving people the option to get extras if they want. So what's wrong with that? Why didn't they just stick with that? I can think of like 20 YouTubers that do this already, and it makes sense. Like Donut Operator, for instance, there's a lot of stuff he can't show on YouTube, so he shows it on his Patreon. And for people that, you know, think that's valuable, it's a perfect excuse for them to spend however much it is to support the creator if they so choose. So I just want to clarify, the Watcher's plan was to keep their Patreon, charge the Patreon users another 6 bucks even to watch the content. The majority of people who paid by giving them ad watches were cut off cold turkey. No wonder it left such a sour taste in a lot of like almost everybody's mouth. You can't accidentally try to double charge people, that's like... That can't slip through the cracks, that doesn't slip through the cracks. This is one of those drunk minds is sober thoughts moments as they've been getting rich and drunk on views and money. So it got to the point where they thought everybody could just dish out more money to them like it was an extra freaking power bill. In a way, it's kind of nice to see some of these massive cocky YouTubers get a big reality check because a lot of these YouTubers are starting to think that they're comparable to things like Netflix when Netflix would triumph them in every statistic possible, like, shamefully. That's no dig though. How can three guys ever, ever be cocky enough to consider them to be competitors against thousands of people, thousands of pieces of art and all in one place done by thousands of people trying to keep their jobs, not just, you know, create content. Now these people were, you know, people that work on movies and stuff, they don't get the luxury of just, you know, hiring 25 people and making their life easier. They gotta pay bills and meet deadlines just like everybody else except they're making content that looks crazy. You can't and you shouldn't think that you can. And if you do, you completely deserve to get knocked off your pedestal because three guys with a camera is not Netflix, brother. It's a YouTube channel. It's probably best to stay in your lane unless like you're like Mr. Beast who foots the bill like he's doing on Amazon. He's not taking off a bite that he can't chew. The Watcher, on the other hand, they're taking off a bite and they're telling their viewers to chew it. It's not cool, man. You can't hire 25 employees for three stars. And all past episodes yep. and series will yep. remain available yep. on YouTube. Yep. As for the question of why yep. we decided to yep. launch our own yep. platform, yep. when we started Watcher yep. in 2020, yep. we wanted to create yep. shows that yep. we were proud of, yep. that we yep. had ownership yep. over, yep. and that would provide yep. you yep. the caliber of yep. content that yep. we felt you deserved. Yep. Yep. However, yep. We were finding it harder and harder to stay relevant to advertisers in the constantly changing YouTube landscape. We faced some incredibly challenging decisions. We didn't want to compromise our content to ensure they met advertising requirements. And we definitely did not want to lay people off that have brought Watcher to life behind the scenes. And we didn't want to bring Watcher to a close, which would have happened if we stayed solely on YouTube. Okay, they're casting so much shame on their viewer right now, it's ridiculous. They're basically saying that their viewers should feel bad because by not going along with this, they're forcing them to downsize their operation. But no one asked them to increase their production quality. I looked at one of their recent videos before all of this happened, and it's just them sitting on set, uh, breaking down a video on a projector. I don't see any type of production here that can't be done for cheap. I mean, that costume definitely doesn't scream, hey, a million views of video can't pay for this. I'm sorry, but these guys saying they can't produce on their budget probably forgot how to produce on a budget like I have to. These guys straight up sound like after they're done their video, they throw out the cameras and the gear because I have no idea why they say everything costs so much. And if all of this does astoundingly add up to more than all of those views can pay for, then who in the right mind thinks it's the viewer's fault? Like, just because you hired 25 people and you don't want to fire one, doesn't mean people should subscribe to a different platform for you and give you six extra dollars a month. You hired the person haphazardly, and now you gotta fire them. You guys wanted to be the boss so badly, now be the boss. 
a lot of people sound like they do accept and like this apology, and I'll give it to them, it does sound good. But the words coming out of their mouth don't explain why they tried to pull such a stinky move. If you paid your phone bill and then realize that there's an extra $6 charge on there, but then you go through and you don't notice any new features, I'm sure that a quick sorry over the phone wouldn't restore your trust back in your phone company. So why should sorry clear the air here for the watcher? That's why we decided to launch the platform, so that we as a company could continue, we could pay our staff fairly, and not only continue to make great content for you, but expand with new shows, new voices, all ad free. And now with the addition of accessible options, this is a decision that we all believe is the best for Watcher. However, we realized that in figuring out the logistics of what this might take, we overlooked the way it would impact all of you. Uh, we hope you'll be patient with us through these mistakes, and we remain incredibly sorry that they were made in the first place. I'm still waiting on the reason why they wanted to double charge their Patreon viewers. Where's that? Where's that answer? Not, sorry you noticed. That's not a we overlooked it thing. That's a we hope you wouldn't have noticed thing because you can't have the skill to create and run a channel like this while simultaneously having the stupidity to overlook a detail that essentially literally doubles your income from a lot of people. I'm sorry, I mean your, your supporters as you call them. If this was the case, then some other thing that they would have let slide through would have been the downfall of their channel way before this happened. You know, if they are, you know, if they didn't realize or overlooked something and they have that type of stupidity and then they would have made a mistake a long time ago that was detrimental to their business. They also keep on going about this ad free experience that they wanted to deliver to you. What's so bad about ads? Anyone who wants it ad free can just sign up for premium. It's not like these guys were sitting down and watching their own content for their entertainment. So if none of their viewers were complaining about watching ads, then why did they use that reason as a catalyst to move all of this shit forward? The math isn't mathing here. They say they're sorry, but they this wasn't an accident. How can you be sorry over an intention like this? You can be regretful, but I'm gonna sound like everybody's mother who's disappointed in them at one point or another. You shouldn't have done it to begin with. Community, who have played such a key role in supporting us from the very beginning. All current Patreon members will receive a free subscription code to the platform. If you already purchased a subscription, please contact us and we will issue you a full refund. We look forward to continuing to make shows and introducing all the incredible things that we've got planned for the platform alongside YouTube. And in the meantime, we are forever grateful to all of the people who make up our community. And we hope that you consider joining us in this next chapter of our journey, whether that's on YouTube or on the platform. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks everybody. Look at his face, man. This dude is absolutely terrified of losing his career right now. I honestly don't feel bad because this, this was entirely self-inflicted. There was not just three of them. There was an entire team of 25 people who all had the ability to stand up and say, hey guys, I like money. Maybe we shouldn't do this. That being said, no one knows the work conditions or whatever behind the watcher. Like, for all we know, they all could have been kind of a little bit blinded by the potentiality of being showered with riches and wealth from all of this. But who knows why post-apology, they're trying to make this streaming platform work still. It's clear, no one wants an extra stupid app to go onto their phone, but I, what I think is that these guys probably have just way too much money invested in this watcher platform to leave it abandoned. They, they, they're just gonna try to use it one way or another. But just remember, they wanted other people to pay for this because they wanted their employees to be paid more, all right? But then they could, all this money they used to create this website and manage this website and all its traffic, all of that money could have been paid to that 25 employees. So let me just say, I'm not convinced by this. I feel like they were trying to push the boundaries here and if they could have gotten away with it, they would have, despite anybody coming up to them that said, hey, I think what you're doing is wrong, unless the internet told them no. I bet you they would have just went through with all of this. You're probably not going to find a lot of people who share my opinion about this topic, but it's because a lot of YouTubers, they seem to be fairly content with this apology. And, you know, I kind of understand that because if you compare this apology to a lot of other apologies, it actually holds up fairly freaking well. But damn it, all I see is contradictions. I was raised that actions, they, they speak louder than words. So it's going to take a lot more words to explain how we want to make better videos, so we're gonna pass the savings on to ourselves. You know, instead of passing the savings on to you, the viewer who watches the ads on the watcher. 
Yo, what's up with the pie, man? It ain't cut. Yeah, right. That's the gimmick. What gimmick? This place, they don't cut their pizza and they pass the savings on. Anyway, I think they're going to take a really big hit from this any way you slice it. When they posted their original video, they very quickly lost over 100,000 followers and that video got over 200,000 dislikes. And I assume that that number is not going to get any, any better until this all blows over and all of his viewers, you know, some new viewers come along and they don't realize what happened. Let this be a lesson, I guess. <laughs> don't let the lifestyle go to your head. All the eyes watching you aren't going to relate to your YouTuber first world problems. And they most definitely won't fund a rich person's endeavors to get more rich. Because that's what this was. Literally. Okay. Okay, I'm not going to make a huge habit of asking for things like this, but I was looking at my analytics last night, and I noticed that around 97.4 of you who are watching my videos, you're not subscribed to me. If you've made it this far into the video, I'm going to go out on a limb and assume you didn't mind the content, and uh, if, if you're willing to, leaving a like would help me make YouTube my home. Of course, with any luck and dedication, because I will be dedicated. And I'll never ask for more than that. Your follow would be more than enough. I'm never going to be like the watcher and ask you to subscribe and pay me for my content. Alright, if you did make it this far into the video, you're a real one. Thank you. I'll see you in my next video.